This is City Manager Jim Drum, and I'm in beautiful downtown Brunswick today. And we're going to visit the historic Ritz Theater. The Ritz Theater is actually owned by the City of Brunswick and has been for many years, but is operated for programming by the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities Association. So let's go inside and learn a little bit more. Hi, Heather. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Um, you Want to go on into the auditorium? Absolutely. It's let's always go. wonderful to come to the Ritz. It is. Got some beautiful artwork here today. It is. It's a local photographer. Well, we're here on stage at the Ritz Theater in downtown Brunswick, and with me today is the executive director of the theater and the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities Association. That's right. It's yes, me. it is. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. Thank you. And so, um, now, how long have you been in that role? I've been in that role for 20 years. 20 years? That's a long time. I know, and thankfully, <laughs> I don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. That's wonderful. So, so now, um, a lot of things have happened in 20 years. Yes. And uh, I guess if you even go back a little further, I mean, the theater's been around since... 1899. 1899, so mm -hmm. it's got a long history in it Brunswick. Does. It does. Was it originally, I, I mean, a lot of things came here. Was it, was it an opera house at one yes, time? Yes, it was originally built as the Grand Opera House. That was the official name. And the Brunswick and, Bur Bur the Brunswick and Birmingham Railroad Company had offices upstairs originally. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. um, but then when movies came into being, immediately they decided to make it a movie theater, and that's when it became the Ritz. So late 20s, the, that sign that's out front of the building was mm -hmm. put on, and it was converted to a movie theater. Um, it stayed operational as a movie theater until the mid to late 70s, and like most of these kinds of places, it fell into um, not use because everyone went to the mall. Um, and so it closed briefly, um, and it was going to be torn down, and fortunately, the city of Brunswick bought the building to save it. Yay! Wonderful. And, that, and that's a great history, actually, that the people in the community came together and that the city was they able did. to step in and buy it. Mm -hmm. Now, looking back at some of the history, I understand the building was in pretty bad shape. It was in pretty bad shape. Um, the first thing that happened after the city bought it was the roof collapsed <laughs> over the auditorium. So, well, that, um, that, was our, that was our good luck. Yeah, it was a good buy. I think it was a yeah. good buy. A, a, but it was. It really was a good buy. Um, so the, um, they put it back together, did a few weird things uh, mm -hmm. because they wanted it to go back to live performances. Um, and so. There were some things that needed to be corrected. We were fortunate to be in Splost 4 okay. um, in 2001, where nice. we had some renovations done that corrected some of those issues. Like now you can see the stage from the balcony, and you couldn't before. <laughs> well, that, that's, so that was that's a big certain, one. That certainly helps. That was a big one. Um, but and then over the years, in the last um, uh, 20 years, we've had some assistance from the Fox Theater. Um, oh, nice. out of Atlanta to have the Ritz sign restored, to have all of the windows on the building. There are actually 58 windows on the Ritz Theater. Um, those have all been restored and many of them have the original glass from 1899. So it's a great, historic, wonderful building and now it gets used a lot again. And it, and it does. I, I think when the city bought the building, I, I think they wanted to see the building and the architecture saved. And I know there's a lot of yes. a lot of grand architecture in, in downtown Brunswick. There is. And it's wonderful that the city stepped in at that early time. And even today, we're looking at grants and things to try to save some of these old historic buildings. Mm -hmm. But besides in the bu a building, if you just restore a building, you have nothing but a museum. Yes. And in <laughs> fact, you need to have programming. And yes. I think that's sort of what where the uh, the partnership came in uh, yes, at, at that time when we mm -hmm. when we. Uh, went in with the GIA yeah. and we went into an agreement. Now that would have started in what year? That started in 1990, um, no, 1989, because it was before I was here. Okay. Um, uh, and that was again a group of uh, community-minded individuals who had started that organization, Golden Isles Arts and Humanities, and they said, hey, this building, because it got renovated and then it just kind of sat for a little while, as, right. as you said. So this group said, hey, let us try to make some stuff happen there. Um, and so this great partnership with the city um, was established um, and has continued going strong over the years. Um, and our organization has grown uh, enormously in the number of programs and, and things that we do. And so that's really um, uh, been a, a, great, a, a great partnership and um, the building is alive. And, and that's wonderful. I mean. At that point, some of the programs came into play. I, I obviously, as a, as a municipal government, we're, we're good at 
uh, sweeping streets and, and police and fire and those mm -hmm. things, but really the, the, the arts side of it, sometimes it can be a little tricky, and so mm -hmm. it's been a great partnership. Um, we have a contract, actually. Each, each year we, we've come together and mm -hmm. uh, the city actually funds the program. I don't know if people realize that in the community, that the city's yeah. always put some funding into uh, the man yeah. managing and working the with the theater. the management of the organization, yeah, of the building, yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely, and yeah. it's, it's done a lot. Uh, and it helps enormously. <laughs> it has. And, and, and you mentioned the SPLOS, and we had the SPLOS 4, but we also mm -hmm. had SPLOS 5. We had some uh, SPLOS 5, which allowed uh, bathrooms to go up into the balcony area of the theater, as well as some other minor uh, things that didn't get taken care of. And if we ever get on another SPLOS, <laughs> let's talk. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's two, a lot of people don't know, there's two floors to this building that haven't been touched mm -hmm. at all. Um, and would make great uh, space for office, for c other kind of community events. Um, so um, there's and a lot that can happen. In and, 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 and in all honesty, I think we're considering that. Coming back to look at that, maybe there, there's some talk of a 2020 SPLOST. That would be great. And so if that actually happens, we could look at what we might be able to do to re reuse some of those uh, those old rooms and offices yeah, up there. Yeah, because it's really cool up there. It, it, it looks like someone, if, if you've had the opportunity to go there, it looks like someone kind of closed the door in about 1953 and yeah. they, haven't, they haven't been back. <laughs> They haven't. They haven't at all. They went in briefly to put in the sprinkler system and a little <laughs> bit of lighting so you can see and so the building is safe and up to code. But other than that, yeah, it's 1953 or earlier in Absolutely. some cases. <laughs> Well, now, I've, I've been on board with the city uh, coming up in four years soon, but okay. I've been real impressed with the programs that we have here, and I want you to talk a little bit about the programs okay. that, that you have. I know you have, uh, and you've tried to, it's a, it's a wide arrangement of programs, yeah. so you, sometimes it's the cinema gourmet, mm -hmm. and uh, it's live performances, mm -hmm. so uh, I know it's, uh, it's, it's November, and we're getting ready for the uh, Christmas season, so we have, uh, I know we've had some radio shows in the past yes. and some live performances. Yeah, this year, um, actually, we're doing a full production of A Christmas Carol. Okay. And it's been uh, about seven years, I guess, since we did the full stage version of Christmas Carol. Um, so really looking forward to that, um, and uh, I am always able to coerce the former mayor of Brunswick, ah. Mr. Brian Thompson, to be Ebenezer Scrooge, because okay. he wasn't a Scroogey mayor, but he is an excellent Scrooge on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we're in rehearsals now, and that'll open in December. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll do matinees, school matinees for the school system. That's um, nice. And then we'll have uh, two weekends of public performances. But yeah, we stay, we stay busy year round with our performances in addition to the rentals that happen in the facility. I mean, we do a performing art series every year, uh, which is all live performances, some that we're producing and some that we're presenting, bringing into the community. Um, we do the film series that you mentioned, Cinema Gourmet, uh, which is very popular. Um, we partner with a local downtown business, Indigo Coastal Shanty. Um, okay. They do the food. We have delicious food. We have an informative talk about the film that we're going to screen and why it's a great film and why you should watch it or why it's important. And then we screen the movie, and it's wonderful. Um, October, we did Double Indemnity, uh, classic film noir. November will be um, North by Northwest, oh, Hitchcock nice. classic. Um, and then we take a break in December, but then we'll be back. Um, we also uh, do uh, exhibits in the gallery space um, that usually rotate monthly. Um, this month through November 16th is a local photographer, Kenny Carroll, um, who's amazing. His work is amazing. And if you look at any of it, mm -hmm. none of it is photoshopped, okay, which is what a lot of people you know, kind of rely on nowadays. But he does it all just with his camera. So it's, okay. it's pretty so remarkable. It's using the traditional methods, I yes. guess. And, and I understand it's black and white photography. Some right? of it is in color and some okay. of it is black and white. Very yeah, good. Okay. Both. Um, but yeah, when we do a lot of other uh, events throughout the year, um, we are a, a partner with the National Endowment for the Arts for the Big Read. Uh, this is nice. the 12th consecutive year that we've received a grant for that. So we get the entire community and actually Coastal Georgia involved in reading, um, which is a great thing. We do a lot of arts education programs in the schools as well. Um, so we're, we're, constantly, we're constantly going. So when you say art education in the schools, you, you go out to the schools? Yeah, we bring in professional artists uh, to do workshops and performances and residencies. We, of course, have field trips. We have uh, a couple of award programs, writing, creative writing programs. We do summer camps here at the Ritz, oh, too, which tie into that. 
And um, two years ago, going into our third year, we started uh, a new program called the Golden Isles Penguin Project, ah. where we do uh, a Broadway-style musical, and all of the artists, the stars of the show, are young people with disabilities. I know that's one of your favorite projects. It's one of my favorite <laughs> projects. It just, it's just so awesome, because they're so enthusiastic, and what's really great about it is they're all paired with a mentor on stage. So it becomes not just, um, you know, oh, we're going to do a show, but it becomes this whole social uh, interactive atmosphere that a lot of these kids just really don't ever get. Um, so it's, and, and the improvement that we've seen just in the last two years with some of the kids, just in their confidence, um, their communication skills, it's just remarkable. No, Theater is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so now this last year was uh, the, the production was Annie, is that right? No, that was the first year was Annie. The first year was Annie. Uh, okay. This past year was Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing Shrek the musical. Ah, Shrek. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that'll be fun. So we, get, so we get a big green ogre or something. Yeah, somewhere okay. in there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And then when when will that be? That'll be in June. That'll second be in June. weekend in June. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's a long, it's a 16 week rehearsal process. So we rehearse that one off site of the Ritz because there's other events. And of course, as I mentioned, it's a rental facility. It's open for the community to use. Um, and the rental rates are extremely low because that's okay. part of our mandate with the city. Well, so let's say you're a group out there and you're looking for a meeting space. What kind of events do people rent the building for? We've had everything here from bodybuilding contests to, um, okay. uh, um, oh, I'm gonna forget their name. There's, there's a lot of different groups. Mm -hmm. that they'll have um, forums. Um, I can't think of the name of that group from Savannah that does, they do a program for the schools, okay. um, and they have like their final event here um, where they give out awards and do that kind of thing. Um, we have guest speakers. We have groups from out of town that will bring in shows. Okay. Um, so uh, it's a huge, wide variety, dance recitals, Spelling bees have happened here. Oh, so it's some, some sort of like a local dance school if they needed a place to do a recital or a program, it, yeah. or they could do it here. As well. uh, or, or it could be a business just looking to hold some sort of a presentation if they, if they wanted to. Yeah, mm -hmm. something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people don't even think about the Ritz in that. I way. know, and it's a great space. I mean, if you're if you're bringing in you know a thousand people, it's not going to work. But right. you know, three or four hundred, it's perfect. It feels very intimate in here. Um, so you're really connecting with the audience. It's a, a wonderful space for lots of things. It is. How many seats do, we, do you have? 440. 440. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are surprised at that when they hear I know. It, it doesn't yeah. even look like it. No. It's, it's, it, but it's 440 seats. And they're comfortable chairs, maybe even more so than the, the stools. I think they are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, this coming year, we're getting mm -hmm. close to, the, to 2019, and I guess you're looking at your program for the 2019 season. I know you don't have everything I worked out, but... Everything worked out. No. No. I mean, we're, we're scheduled through June. Okay. Well, yeah, so we do have, um, we're bringing in uh, Peach State Opera. They'll be doing a production of La Boheme. Okay. So that's something completely different. Absolutely. Uh, then we've got the classic Nashville Roadshow, part two, the sequin sequel with um, Katie Deal and Jason Petty. That'll be in April. Um, uh, Big Read events will be all happening during February. Uh, Cinema Gourmet will be taking place. I think there's something else we're doing, but I can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> a lot of, lot of activities. There's a lot of activities, a lot. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, your organization, uh, it's, a, it's a nonprofit organization. Yes. And you don't really have a lot of staff. No. So a lot of folks that uh, are part of this sometimes are volunteers. Oh, yeah. And we're always looking for volunteers. Always. Yes. <laughs> um, from ev everything from, you know, it can be coming in and helping us label postcards, um, to ushering for shows. It's a great way to see shows for free, too, yeah. even though our tickets are pretty cheap. Um, but um, ushering, um, all of our actors and the things that we produce um, ourselves are volunteers. Um, right. And we need help with uh, set construction and those kinds of things when we're producing a show. So you can go volunteer at goldenislesarts.org. Uh, go to our website um, and there's a form you can fill out and submit. It's real easy. And we will take it. <laughs> okay. Well, I know you mentioned this, constructing the sets. I mean, occasionally there might be issues with lights, and I know that some of that may be yeah. more technical, but it's good to get some people back that might have some of those, those yes, skills out skills. there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
So a moment ago you mentioned uh, that we have uh, photographers that have come in and or you have a photographer set up to come in and put up his artwork. Mm -hmm. If there was a, an artist out there, it may not be a photographer, it might be, but if they wanted to come in and um, show their artwork, what would they have to do to... They just need to first get in touch with us and usually most all artists now have everything online. So they can okay. just send uh, me an email or uh, email the organization info at goldenislesarts.org if you search that or search the Ritz, you're probably going to find that anyway. Um, and usually I have the, our exhibits for the gallery space booked out uh, about a year. We're booked out through August of 2019. Um, and we really, we also have some uh, annual exhibits um, that are help with our arts education programs. December is always the annual student art show. So Right. It's very colorful, displaying all of these kids' arts work, K, uh, grades K through 12. We host the Recycled Art Exhibit that we partner with, uh, Keep Brunswick Golden Isles Beautiful. That's yes. not their name anymore. Keep Golden Isles Beautiful. Right. Even though it still should be Keep Brunswick Golden Isles Beautiful. We, uh, <laughs> we agree. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we partner with them for that. But others are, a lot of them uh, I'll try to focus on local artists too, to give okay. them an opportunity um, to display their work, because a lot of people don't. But we do bring in artists as well. Um, so I'm always open to looking at that if, if they just want to send me um, a, a link to their artwork or, or just get in touch with us to find out more. Because, um, you know, I. I when I started working here, there wasn't as much traffic downtown and a right. lot going on at the time was to, to offer the community the opportunity to experience things that they're not going to get here. Mm -hmm. um, that maybe they have to drive some, why drive? Stay right. here, come in. We've got as wonderful uh, of artwork, of artists, of performances. Um, that you can see the same thing in Jacksonville or Savannah or Atlanta. Right. Stay here. Absolutely. It's, and it's cheaper, you know? <laughs> so, um, so I'm always have been that trying to open that up, the experiences for the community, not just um, um, having something just to have something. It's about what would be interesting for the community as well. And that's a good point. And you know, you talk about people staying here, but I also see when we have events here at the Ritz and you, you walk through downtown and uh, sometimes it's first Friday and you get a lot of exposure. People come into the mm -hmm. theater and we'll see a lot of the artwork that's put up. But it also um, on other nights and other events, you look at the license plate out there and it says Brantley County or mm -hmm. it says Camden. So we're not just pulling in people here in Brunswick. We're no. pulling people in surrounding areas that may yeah. not even have this type of resource in their communities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a part of it, you know, we're trying to get the word out throughout coastal Georgia, uh, especially our seven counties, but I want to pull those people from Savannah and Jacksonville too if I can, but to show them and to showcase not just the Ritz, but the city, the community. Um, and a lot of people do come in. Our, our audience base is not just here, it's all around. So we're opening up uh, Brunswick and our art scene to a lot of people. And with downtown becoming more busy, we're mm -hmm. seeing more shops and, and restaurants and things that are opening up. It means maybe more people coming to the Ritz. Oh, yeah. Maybe coming in, spending the night, seeing a show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know we're, we're trying to still work to get the downtown hotel, and that mm -hmm. would be a plus. But in the meantime, there's, there's some really beautiful bed and breakfast that we have oh, here. Oh, absolutely. And you could tie it into a nice uh, overnight or a weekend in mm -hmm. Brunswick, so people could come yeah. stay and uh, kind of reminisce in the history of Brunswick and have, have an evening at uh, mm -hmm. the Ritz and stay at a bed and breakfast. Yeah, I think that's, absolutely. So it sounds like a nice, mm -hmm. uh, a nice and way to put a weekend and, together. You know, I know people all do, I mean, the downtown restaurants definitely benefit whenever we have something going on here. Uh, even if they're not staying overnight, they're going to eat before or maybe after the show. So um, it's a great partnership all around. It makes an economic impact. It really does, and I, I think I, always do. Yeah. And, I, and I think the city has recognized that through the years that it really was uh, one of the catalyst projects that we did very early on to help bring people back to downtown when everybody started walking off to the mall. Mm -hmm. And now we look at the mall, and maybe we feel a little bad. The mall's not doing as well I as it know, used to, it's and not and, no. and downtown's doing much better. So, yeah. Well, uh, I think people, uh, and it's a hard. This is a hard business. Don't go into this unless you love it. Uh, <laughs> True. But. Um, because we, it, things change, and they change a lot more rapidly now. So what people, I think, are looking more for now are experiences. 
what's an experience I can have, not just, and I think about that when we're talking about doing shows or what shows we're going to offer or the, or the types of events because just coming in and sitting down and staring at something is not as uh, of interest to as many people as how can I fully experience this. So when we do a Christmas Carol, part of that experience is I know these people. And that's one reason we have our local actors. I know right. those people. Look at them. Oh, Look how awesome that is. Cinema Gourmet, you're interacting, you're eating, you're talking with your neighbors, you're hearing information about a movie that you might have seen you know, 20 times before. Suddenly it becomes new because you have all these other facts about the film. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a tricky thing to do to find what those are, but I think that's the appeal of downtown too. Right. You've got these little niche shops and things that are popping up and different tastes of restaurants. And that's an experience that you can go and be in. You gotta do something to pull people away from their phones and their computers, so. <laughs> that's a good point. A lot of, lot of competition these yeah, days. Yeah, there is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and, and I know in, in local government, it's funding is always an issue for programs and things that we do. There's always more things that we need to do in government and in, in city government than we probably have the funding for. Mm -hmm. Or at least there's more desires to do more than we have. And I'm, I'm sure it's the same way in the arts, not oh, ev everywhere, not just in Brunswick, but throughout, throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So you've had a lot of challenges financially. So I know that the city is a great partner in that, but we obviously we don't cover near nearly anywhere near all of your expenses. No. So where where do you get funding? How do you do it? I know there's maybe some admissions, but that's yes. that doesn't. Bring the admissions in the don't, yeah, a, a lot of people may think, you know, oh wow, you're making all this money when you're selling tickets, especially with shows that we're presenting or bringing in, right. they typically, if we're covering the costs, I'm a happy camper, because they're, um, they're expensive to right. bring in, um, and we want to keep our uh, ticket prices as low as we can, um, because we're a service for the community. So, and that's gonna keep people coming in the door too. Right. Um, so, uh, in, so of course we, uh, uh, I of course write grants and things like right. that for programs. So, uh, so some is grant funding. Some is grant funding. Some is earned from the ticket sales. We also ask people to donate to the organization and the best way to do that is as a member. Okay. You can become a member. Um, at various levels, starting at fifty dollars and, okay. and up. So now, if you're a okay member, too. you're a member of Golden Isles Arts and Humanities. Okay. What that gets you is reduced uh, ticket prices. Okay. So if you're a member, your tickets are cheaper. Mm -hmm. If you're a member, you can request a reserved seat for nice. the show that you okay. want to come to. And of course, the tax donation. Great feeling about supporting the arts um, and supporting downtown then too. Um, you know, and, it, and it's hard, uh, it, it's always been tough for all the arts, um, uh, not just here, but it's a little, I would say it's a little tougher here because we don't have huge corporations okay. like in some communities. Um, we get corporate sponsors. We, so we, corporate sponsors, we don't have as many of. Okay. And typically they'll be for specific programs like the Penguin Project or the Big Read. Um, but just, you know, just general. So. You can support by just being a member, okay. and you get some benefits from that, and um, that good feeling. And we'll keep doing this. We'll just keep doing it. <laughs> and then you say there's certain levels, so you have like different D different price level, like fifty dollars, okay. seventy five, right. and on up. So they can find out up. about that on, from where on your website? You can go on our website, goldenislesarts.org, okay. and um, just click on the membership tab, and you can get all the information about that. And you can join online. So you can join online, so that can yeah, be, yeah, you absolutely. Yeah, you can join online. You can do everything online now, right? <laughs> you, I suppose you can. You can buy can. tickets online, you can join online, so you can be a volunteer online, all that stuff. Well, no, they need to come in if they're a volunteer. Cause you need well, to be, <laughs> they can sign up to be a volunteer online. There then they go. can come in and work. Okay. <laughs> Well, Heather, that's great. Uh, I, I, I've learned a lot of the, about what's happening at the Ritz even here the, the today. So um, is, there, is there something else that we haven't asked you that you'd like to, to add? for the public to learn about the Ritz and what they do? No, I mean, I, I would just say, uh, <laughs> what we do, we do for you. So come in and participate, take part in it. It's, um, there's nothing like experiencing um, something, especially as a group, as a community. 
Um, don't isolate yourself with your phone and your computer. Come out and join us. Even if you're just strolling down for First Friday, stop in and check out the art. And we always have delicious snacks. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Enjoyed it. All right. Have a good day. You too. Well, the Ritz Theater has been here since 1899 in downtown Brunswick, and it's really made its impact. In the early days with uh, shows and then later on movies, and now today, again, live performances downtown. We learned a lot today about that, and we learned about how our community and our, as our city has partnered with the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities Association to bring culture and arts to our community and expose that to our, our children in our town. And so this is definitely a, a great investment of the city. It's a great investment in our community. And, we hope you've learned a lot about the Ritz Theater. So I hope that you'll come to downtown Brunswick and then you'll take the time to come and visit the Ritz Theater as well and enjoy downtown Brunswick. Hi, this is Matthew Hill with the Brunswick Downtown Development Authority. We have a lot of great events coming up in Brunswick this November, starting with First Friday on November the 2nd, from 5 to 8 p.m. in historic downtown Brunswick. See old friends and meet new ones at this monthly community event downtown. Shop at our merchants, check out the latest at the Ritz Theater, grab a bite and quench your thirst at one of our restaurants. Porch Fest on Sunday, November the 4th from noon to 6 p.m. is in Old Town, Brunswick. You can park downtown or at Glen Academy and walk or bike to the information tent at the corner of Prince and Egmont Streets, an afternoon of music, food, and fun. Cinema Gourmet on Thursday, November the 8th, 6.30 p.m. at the Ritz Theater. This month's movie is North by Northwest. A hapless New York advertising executive is mistaken for a government agent by a group of foreign spies and is chased across the country. This classic is directed by Alfred Hitchcock and stars Cary Grant, Eva Marie Saint, and James Mason. The Moxie Craft Fest, Saturday, November the 10th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Old City Hall on Newcastle Street. Join us for another fun, modern, handmade market. The annual Brunswick Christmas tree lighting will be on Friday, November the 23rd, 5.30 p.m. in Jekyll Square East. That's between Ned Cash Jewelers and Tipsy McSways on Newcastle Street. A reading of Twas the Night Before Christmas is followed by the arrival of Santa and the Christmas tree lighting. Kids can visit with Santa and there are free carriage rides. Small Business Saturday and the Holiday Craft Bazaar is on Saturday, November the 24th, starting at 10 a.m. in historic downtown Brunswick. Support our local businesses, see the window displays, and discover parks full of amazing local crafts. Brunswick Christmas Parade on Saturday, December 1st, 5.30 p.m. This annual Brunswick tradition is a lighted Christmas parade that starts at Howard Coffin Park and follows Gloucester Street west to Mary Ross Waterfront Park. The grandstand is located in front of City Hall at Gloucester and Union Street. There's so much going on in Brunswick this November, the poll is taking a break. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at Historic Downtown Brunswick to participate in this monthly poll.